In my last video, I talked about my personal impressions of the Destiny 2 beta, and here is basically what I said. If you enjoy the first game, there is probably a lot to like about the second game. It's basically a bigger, better, prettier Destiny 1. But if you didn't enjoy the first game, there isn't much here in the way of dramatic changes or new elements that will make you like the new one. For better or for worse, Destiny 2 is a very familiar game. It takes the basic framework of the prequel and sort of refines what's already there. Now, following the release of my video, a lot of people took to stating in the comments that my opinions weren't really valid since you can't judge a game from its beta. And this is something that I wanted to address because I think the question of can a game be judged by its beta is a worthwhile topic. I should begin by pointing out that contrary to some people's beliefs, my last video wasn't about reviewing Destiny 2. I'm well aware that the beta was just a small taste of what the full game has to offer, and I fully agree that no game should be judged in its entirety by a beta. At the same time though, I disagree with those who believe in the notion that you can't criticize a game during a beta, that you can only criticize a game once it's released. There are some people out there who use the term beta as a way of excusing a game for its shortcomings or as a means to falsely assure themselves and others that a game will make some kind of monumental change or turnaround in the short time it has left before release. They sort of misinterpret the word beta to mean that it's a very early version of the game that doesn't truly represent what the final game's gonna be like. But I believe that this is a misguided way of looking at betas. All alphas, betas, early accesses, whatever, they are all vertical slices of a game. There is enough in these vertical slices to get a fairly good idea for how a game will generally look and play like, how it's structured and what it generally has in store for the final version. A beta generally allows players to determine if a game will be for them or not, or to determine who this game is for. More often than not, if you loved a beta, there is not much that the developers can change about the game on a fundamental level from then until release date, to make you suddenly hate the game. There will be certain things that they can tweak or fix to make the overall experience better, but if you generally enjoyed a game's beta, you'll likely enjoy the final version of the game as well. Similarly, if you did not enjoy the beta, there is not much that developers can fundamentally change about the game to all of a sudden make you love it. Because at the end of the day, betas are test runs of an almost final product. Betas are meant to stress test the game or to be a means to determine minor tweaks and gameplay rebalances before the game's release. So with a beta, you are getting a fairly accurate representation of the finished game, even if not the complete experience. Seldom does a final game leave a completely different impression from an alpha, beta, or early access. With Mass Effect Andromeda, for example, its early access gave us a fairly good idea for the kind of quality we can expect. It was during the early access that GIFs and memes of Andromeda's subpar facial animation began to spread like wildfire. And when the game officially launched, it was not too far off from what people experienced in the early access. Granted, in this case, the early access was the final product, except people could play 10 hours of it before the game launched. So it is a little different from something like a beta, where there is more room for changes and adjustments before launch. But then you've got games like the PlayStation 4 exclusive Neo, which hosted various alphas and betas throughout the months leading up to its launch. There were definitely a lot of great tweaks, adjustments, and fixes that were made to make the overall experience much better. But by the time the game launched, it wasn't unrecognizable or anything, it was still fundamentally the same game. Nothing changed so dramatically that if you hated the alpha, you would have loved the final game, or if you loved the alpha, you would have hated the final game. Those who enjoy the alpha probably really enjoy the final game, and those who didn't enjoy the alpha probably didn't enjoy the final game. This brings us to Destiny 2. I understand that the Destiny 2 beta is just a beta and that it's not the finished product. I definitely agree that you can't really review a game until it launches 
and until players get to experience the full wealth of content. But that doesn't mean that we should turn a blind eye to clear shortcomings in the beta, since again, a beta is a very accurate vertical slice of the game. So some of the fundamental criticisms I had for the Destiny 2 beta won't just suddenly up and vanish when the final game launches. In the case of Destiny 2, its repetitive mission structure and the lack of enemy variety is not just something that'll magically fix itself with only a month left to go until the game releases. You can't just say that these shortcomings are invalidated just because I experienced them in the beta and not in the finished, polished product. The beta isn't just some magical thing that can transform into whatever the developers want. It is as close to the final game as you're gonna get to play. So while they can tweak things and fix certain things, a lot of the fundamental stuff that's in there isn't gonna go away in the final game, the good and the bad. I know that some people will have less problem with Destiny 2 shortcomings than others, and I can respect that. Video games are highly subjective and it's all a matter of personal taste. At the same time though, I'm well aware that a lot of the shortcomings that I mentioned for the Destiny 2 beta were the same things that turned people off from the first game. So naturally, I will give fair warning to those who expected Destiny 2 to fix all of the issues that they had with Destiny 1 that it just ain't so. Now, one thing that I failed to mention in my previous video is that the final Destiny 2 game will feature an expanded world that encourages more exploration than the first game did. For those who don't recall, in Destiny 1, there was very little reason to explore. There were these expansive open worlds, but a lot of it was mostly empty, objectives were very just defined and direct, and there was very little in the way of compelling new discoveries. Destiny 2 apparently intends to change that by introducing a revamped version of public events, which now occur across multiple locations. Adventures, seamless side quest-like missions, which will expand on story and offer backstories. World quests, bigger versions of adventures that become available after you finish the main campaign, and Lost Sectors, which are basically Destiny's version of dungeons. Some of this stuff was featured in Destiny 1 to a smaller or lesser extent after the expansions, while others are completely new to this game. Destiny 2 will also feature multiple landing points that you can unlock as you explore planets to further highlight their expansiveness and the sense of discovery. All of this definitely sounds pretty neat and a marketed improvement. People who loved Destiny 1 will probably eat this stuff up. But from what I've seen, I'd be hard pressed to say that this stuff will be enough to win back Destiny 1 critics. The fundamental problems that I experienced during the beta still holds. Destiny 2 offers very little variety when it comes to level design, mission structure, enemy types, and activities. Watching through the IGN first video highlighting all of Destiny 2's new exploration elements, all of the gameplay footage bogged down to one thing, shoot and kill waves of enemies. Sure, there may be new mission types that are more deeply integrated into the open world, but you're still doing the same thing. You're killing and grinding. The rinse and repeat nature of the original game that turned so many people off remains in Destiny 2. This emphasis on shooting, killing, and grinding was a fundamental aspect of Destiny 1, and it remains a fundamental aspect in Destiny 2. And this is something that comes across very clearly in the beta. And look, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those who do enjoy this type of gameplay. Plenty of people play Destiny 1 for a very long time, and they had fun, they had a blast, and that's totally cool. All I'm saying is that for those who didn't enjoy Destiny 1 for these very reasons, have little cause to expect a vastly superior experience with Destiny 2. So the bottom line is that yes, Destiny 2's beta is just a beta, it is not the official final release. But it's enough of a vertical slice to give me a pretty definitive impression of the final game. It's not about reviewing the game or giving it a score or anything like that, it's about saying that there is enough there in the beta to tell you that it will do very little for those who were disappointed by the first game. I also know that there are some Destiny veterans out there who are disappointed with how little progress Destiny 2 seems to make. I've heard some say that Destiny 2 feels more like what Destiny 1 should have been in the first place rather than a true next step 
for the series. And then there are those who are head over heels for this game. They love the beta, they love all the gameplay footage that they've seen, they love how familiar it is, and they cannot wait to get their hands on the final game. So there's a broad spectrum of opinions for Destiny 2, and I respect all of them. You do you, you like whatever game you wanna like. But I do believe that the beta is representative enough of the final product on a fundamental level to be able to tell who this game is for and who it isn't for. And I still hold the opinion that this game is definitely not for me. Not after Destiny 1, not after playing the beta, and not even after seeing some of the progress that Bungie has made in terms of exploration. It still all bogs down to killing waves of enemies, which to me just gets boring real quick. I need more variety in my range of activities that I can do in a video game. As for how good Destiny 2 will end up being as a complete package, that's a determination we'll have to make come September. But for right now, the beta did nothing to indicate that this game is for me or for anyone else who shunned the first game. For better or for worse, Destiny 2 is just more Destiny 1. It is refined Destiny 1. Some people want that, others don't. C'est la vie. You can't review a full game from the beta, but you certainly can make some pretty definitive first impression judgments. So yeah, there you go, folks. I hope this video helped to clarify my stance on Destiny 2 and its beta, and betas in general, I suppose. These are just my thoughts and opinions, though. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Also, if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon to help our community remain independent from corporate interference. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out. <laughs>